Thank you for joining Pastor Curtis and Joy for this message. If you would like to hear more from Pastor Curtis or Joy, please check them out on their Coker Ministries YouTube channel. Also, please like and subscribe if these messages are a blessing to you. You can also visit their webpage at cokerministries.com. God bless you. Have a great day. This ministry functions on the support of our listeners. We appreciate your prayers and your financial blessings. Your support helps us to continue to share the message of grace, peace, Christ righteousness, and the finished work of the cross. You can give online or digitally at the Cash app. The name is Coker Ministry or Joy Coker. Also at Venmo at Joy-Coker. Or you could mail your support or prayer request to Coker Ministries, 15239 555th Avenue, Parkers Prairie, Minnesota, 56361. We pray God's blessings over you. in Christ, you are blessed, highly favored, and so very deeply loved. Again, thank you for joining us in the Word. Be blessed. Well, we'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and share some things as she's getting that ready. We had a great time in Wilmer uh, Saturday. We uh, we met there and had a house full, and uh, it's just amazing how the never really got to what we were going to share. As a matter of fact, we're going to share this tonight, what we were going to share there, but there was just so much other stuff that was coming up, and, and uh, at the end of the session, it was just, there was such a sweet spirit. Everybody was like, just... It was. It was great. It was great. It was great. Go ahead. Okay, announcements. Ladies Bible study this Wednesday. We're going to be in Chapter 10. Go ahead and read 11, too, because we may do 11. Ah! Um, maybe? That's a joke. Uh, <laughs> you think I'm long-winded? <laughs> well, you know, there's so many good things. It is Thank so you. good. Thank you. It is so good. Okay, yeah. so, so and then, <laughs> then after that, we are in right. Fergus Falls this weekend, and then we leave Sunday, and we'll be gone. So after this Monday night, three Mondays we're gone, and three Wednesdays we're gone after this Wednesday. Bye. And Bob and Helen, Bob and Helen. make Bob sure and Helen. you let them know you love them. They're leaving in the morning. Oh, <laughs> bye. Montana, true, true snowbirds. We're yes. not coming back. Yes, you are. <laughs> I'm I'm to go true snowbirds, rope. they go yes. to snow oh, yes. instead of beach. Yeah. Oh. So, um, thank you guys for your prayers because they have been effectual. We've been having some great meetings. So. Yeah, Bob and Helen. Thank you. Yes, and pray for them as they are traveling. Mm. Okay. And, um, yeah. Actually, we have a lot of prayer requests. I'm not necessarily going to mention them now, but we have a lot of prayer requests even right here in our midst. We have prayer requests. So, um, as we were singing, that Jesus is our healer, know that. Mm -hmm. And that's a fact. Yeah. That's not a maybe. It's a fact. Yes. We have the same power. Right. Is what we the and same more, Holy Spirit. More. Yes. The same Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead well, lives so right here in all of us. And, and He has no sickness. That's right. Or of any kind, no disease, no lacks of any kind. Mm -hmm. He has it all. And he lives here. If you said yes, he lives in you. I think that's it. Mm -hmm. You sure? Until I think of the next thing. And then you're going to run. You'll save it for later. Save it for later. All right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity you give us to gather together in this your place, the place of our heart. Holy Spirit, we simply ask that you do what you can only do. Open the eyes of our understanding. Bring to us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of who you are and what Jesus said you were going to do in our lives, what Jesus has done to fulfill the eternal work of, and plan of his Father from the beginning of the ages. Holy Spirit, be our comforter. Take the information we've gleaned over the years and cause a transformation, a miracle to take place. Transform that information into revelation. And may that revelation transform us on the inside. Yes. So we can give you glory on the outside. So the world may know that you love them too. 
All God's people said? Amen. amen and amen. Well, we're going to cram two, probably two weeks of teachings into this. and uh, So I'm going to go real quick. To listen fast. <laughs> listen fast. Joy's fingers, is, when they get ready, we're going to start reading some scriptures. But in Matthew, just, just in, most people know this first one, but in Matthew chapter 16, uh, Jesus is talking to the disciples and uh, Peter is there and he, he asked Peter, who do men say that I am? And we know his response. He said, you are the Christ. And he said, flesh and blood had not revealed that to him, but the Father. And that, that, that information came from, see, it wasn't worldly information like the other responses were. Some say you're this. Some, there's lots of information you can know about Scripture, but just because you know the text doesn't mean you know the truth. And that's what we've been sharing on for the last two or three months, is knowing the difference between text and truth. Because it's the truth that sets you free, it's not the text. The Pharisees knew text, but they didn't know the truth that was contained in the text. The text was about Jesus, but they missed it. There he was, right in front of them. And uh, so when, when Peter was... Uh, conversing with Jesus in this, and Jesus continued to share, and he said this, you know, he, he, and Joy put Matthew 16, verse 19. Oh, I can't turn it. Goodness gracious. It's up there now. Go ahead, Jerry. Read it nice and loud. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you build on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And we're not going to talk about the binding and the loosing. And there's a lot of misunderstanding really about what that's talking about. Because a lot of times everybody gets it backwards. I think whatever you, uh, you, you, you do in the Spirit is going to stop what's on earth. But that's not what it says. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. I kind of, anyway, won't get into that. But I want to get into the part of the keys. Because every kingdom has it. Every kingdom has its own authority, its own laws and regulations, has its own language. Last year we got into this in more detail, but we're going to go pretty fast tonight. Uh, you know, uh, you can be in, in, in Mexico and you're going to know what kind of language? Spanish. Spanish. And you're going to think. If you have a language, you have to, you have to think the way the language... The language is a product of the, the way of thinking. At the Tower of Babel, when, when God divided uh, the, the people into language groups, He divided up the, the wisdom that was there into the... He divided up that wisdom and that way of thinking, and it produced a language. Language is more than just a speech, it's the way of thinking. You have to think different. Just like in the Kingdom of Heaven. You know, you can go to church, but that doesn't mean you understand the language of the Kingdom of Heaven. You may have some religious language, but every, every kingdom has a different kind of currency. They have a different kind of speech. They have a different way of thinking. And that is the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus said here that he was going to give the church or us or those that have that revelational knowledge that he was going to build his church on the fact of revelational knowledge. The, the knowledge that comes from heaven. He's going to build... Matter of fact, you realize this is the first time church is mentioned in Scripture? And the first time it's mentioned in Scripture, it's mentioned in a, an act of warfare. The gates of hell will not prevail against. Now, I'm not going to get into this in detail again, and I say a lot of this stuff just to make the people on online get all... <laughs> wished I was there, could I could hear that? Because the, the one thing I never have heard taught in eschatology... You know, the study of the end times and all the different opinions is that this verse right here. It says, The gates of hell won't what? Amen. Well, some people's teaching of the end times makes the church going through the tribulation and the gates of hell are prevailing on, the, on everybody. If you're a Christian and the tribulation, you're getting prevailed against. But Jesus said the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. So that's just a little commercial. So anyway, think about that. But Jesus gave him the keys to the kingdom of heaven. What we're talking about tonight are the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Not just the keys, but we're going to talk about one specific key. Because I believe there's multiple keys. Yeah. But just like with the, just like with anything, if you're if you have many keys and many doors, uh, 
you have one what is called a master key. And I'm, tonight we're going to talk about what I believe is, what the scripture says is the master key to the kingdom of heaven. It will open all the doors. Matter of fact, what do keys do? Open or close. They, 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 they unlock or they lock. And that's the principle of binding and loosing. But they unlock or they, they lock. So in other words, it either gives you access or it denies access depending on the purpose of the key in the door. And so what we need to understand is the master key, I believe uh, that that is part of the kingdom of heaven, is thankfulness. You can't, in scripture, and we're going to go through, real quick, Joy, we're going to go through these scriptures. Put on Romans chapter 1, verse 8. And I, I love how simple this is. He just makes it so so clear. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Okay, I can't see it. Someone read that. Jerry, read that to me. First, I thank my God. Whoa, 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 stop. First. The first thing he does is, is thanking God the first thing that we do. It should be. Look at this. The, yeah. Before he gets in, you know how, many great, how much great teaching is in the book of Romans? A lot. Yeah, oh my gosh. You, you really can't be a Gentile Christian or a Christian that used to be a Gentile without understanding the book of Romans. And what's the first thing he does? Jerry, read thank that again real slow. You read first, it. I thank my God through Jesus Christ wow. for all you all. And what's he doing? He's thanking for the people that he's beginning to teach to. Man, there has to be... See, the way into people's life is to be thankful. Man, if you're not if you're not thankful, I'm just going to get down to nitty gritty. If you want to change your the atmosphere in your family, you be thankful. If you want to change the atmosphere in your job at the mall, you know, you just be thankful. You you want to draw people to you, you be thankful for people. You let them. Man, I I, I can't help but think about the mall. How many times I've walked past the mall and there's someone back there. That's just, they don't want to be there. They're like, they got that sour look on their face, you know. You know, but if you're just thankful for people, you know, you'll draw people. The scripture says, well, we can't, I can't take these rabbit trails. It says, be <laughs> thankful for people. This is how he started his ministry to the people in Rome. Was the first thing I do is I thank my God for you. Man, you want to change the situation? If you got someone that doesn't like you, start being thankful for that person. And we'll find out how that works in a, in a little bit, being thankful for that person that doesn't like you. Because I call those things opportunities for growth. See, anybody can be thankful for what is obvious. A, a child can be thankful for that. But can you be thankful for something that's not obvious? Oh, we're going. I hope you. Yeah, we got the clock up there. Okay, I got to hurry. Let's go on real quick. Ephesians chapter five, verse twenty. Ephesians chapter five, verse twenty says this: Give thanks always for all things to God the Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, and now you ask the question: How can you give thanks in all things? Well. You give thanks not necessarily for the situation, but you know the Word of God has the answer to that situation. So in any negative situation, if it's a negative situation, you can say, thank you, Father, because in your Word, the solution is here. Your guidance is here. Your peace is in here. What people need... I got. You can name the situations. People need the peace of God in their life. Yes, especially now. I mean, I could, we don't have time to go through all that. You and, In the Scriptures, in the Word of God, is the answer to any negative situation. Wow. Let's, let's go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Concerning zeal. Well, wait a minute. Make sure I'm in it, right? Verse 6. No. Be anxious. 
Verse 5, let your, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with what? Thanksgiving. How are you supposed to make your prayers and how are you supposed to present your supplications to the Lord? First of all, with the thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, I and, and people always focus on the problem more than they focus on God in a situation. Now, Joy put uh, the second uh, one. Put slide. The second one. Yeah, put slide number two. Complaining only happens when you are more mindful of a problem than we are of God. Or a solution. The only time we're really negative is when we're looking more of the, the problem is bigger than our God. Most people pray, they tell God how big their problem is instead of tell, telling the problem how big their God is. And what the Word says. You know, we focus on the problem instead of focusing on the answer. And the Word has the answer. It has the solution. The Holy Spirit is here to guide us through those situations. He's the great comforter. Does everybody not understand what the great comforter means? That means when you're not... That means when you're... Down and out. You know, fill in all the other blanks. <laughs> Whatever. Approach the throne of what? Grace boldly in the time of need. You're going to have times of need and we're supposed to approach the throne of grace boldly in those times and receive the comfort of the Holy Spirit. You know, complaining is just when you're focused more on the problem than you're more on what God's Word says about that. And that's our choice. Do you realize, uh, uh, well, I guess we would call it anxiety. You know, people that are fearful of things that haven't happened yet, you know, that's emotion that's expressed for something that hasn't happened. That's a faith for a negative that hasn't taken place. Faith is a confidence of, ex of good things uh, in, in the Scripture in Hebrews 11, uh, 1. Faith, faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is a substance. Faith is hoping for is not is not hoping or wishing. It's knowing what God has established and having and your emotions lining up to what that says. So, see, fear is not the opposite uh, opposite of faith. It takes just as much faith on your part, human faith, to believe in a negative as it is a positive. So if you're afraid of something coming to pass that hadn't happened yet, you're using your faith. You're attaching your faith to something negative, and it's moving your emotions. It takes just as much faith to stop that and put it on something positive about that situation. It's just what we've trained ourselves to do. It's all in our control. Do you want that slide? Yes. Complaining is the confession of our faith. Just like a positive confession is the confession of your faith. If you're confessing the Word of God, that the, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to what? Speak. To speak. So if you're, if you're sold out on the Word of God in that situation, you're going to speak what the Word of God says. If you're not, if you're sold out... See, most of us have all come out of a, a negative world. We see negativity everywhere. We're raised in it. You know, most people are told that when you're a bad, because you did a bad thing, you're a bad person. That's not what the Word says. You, you're, you're not, just because you did, you know, you're not a sinner because you sin. You sin because you're a sinner. <laughs> Even if you don't sin, you're still a sinner. Because yeah. <laughs> you're born after Adam. Yeah. Unless you get born again and you have the nature of God, the Spirit of God on the inside of you, now you're a king's kid. And you have a, fr a flesh problem. But it doesn't make you a sinner. You can never be a sinner again once you become born of the Spirit. 
1 Peter 1.23. Here it comes. We throw this up, I think, every week. 1 Peter 1.23. Vicki, can you read that nice and loud, Jerry's? Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. Go ahead. Through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. When you get born again from above, you have an incorruptible seed placed inside of you. That means you can't be... Incorruptible means it can't be corrupted. Now our soul is going to get that way and our body is going to get that way when we get a glorified body at the rapture. Let's go ahead and do some more of this. Let's look at uh, Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. I can almost get to these. It says this, Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in, with what? Thanksgiving. How are we supposed to be praying? Pray! Oh, help me, Lord. Oh, help me, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. It says with thanksgiving. I believe thanksgiving will open, it gives us access to the throne room. It gives us access into people's lives. It gives us access into people's hearts. Try this. I mean, we're, we're in the Thanksgiving season. That's why we're sharing on this. We need to understand, you can change the atmosphere of your family reunion simply by being thankful for that uncle that you don't like. <coughs> You can change the world around you by being thankful. <laughs> oh, snicker on the front row. <laughs> yeah, I wish we had. <laughs> uh, I wish we had more time to get into all this. When we deal in heart physics, we deal with a lot of this kind of things. Because this this type of te these types of teachings in here will expose the wounds in someone's heart and help them heal. Jesus came to heal the what broken, broken heart. heart. He didn't come to get. He didn't come to this world to get people to stop sinning. He came to heal the broken heart to make us at one with Him. And when that happens, we're going to stop sinning. It's going to happen natural, easy. He said, "My burden is light. Put my yoke upon you." Uh, let's go to First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse eighteen. Are you proud of me? I'm going by my notes. Yes. You see that? Very good. This is one of the first times I've made it this far. <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs> you know, be thankful. No, come on. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse eighteen. In everything, give thanks. For this is the what? The will oh, of God. God. Oh God, I don't know what the will of God is. I'll pray. Well, you know what the first will of God is? It's so simple. Give thanks. Give thanks. You can't get away from it. It's everywhere. Now, this is just said. We talked about this, I think, every Thanksgiving season for the last 10 years, okay? So we're just going, blowing through this real quick because we're going to add to it tonight. And uh, I want you to show you Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 19. <coughs> Joy, can you put that? You want to start with there 18? Jerry, can you read that? 18? Yep. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring back the captivity of Jacob's tents and have mercy on his dwelling places. The city shall be built upon its Jer Jer own, own mound, <laughs> and the palace shall remain according to its own plan. Then out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of those who make merry. I will multiply them, and they shall not diminish. Oh. Is the scripture telling us that if you choose to be merry and thankful, I think that's what it says uh, in Jeremiah 30, verse 19. Let me get there. Thank you, Jerry, for reading that. Then out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of those who make merry. I will multiply them, and they will shall, shall not diminish. Man. Then out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of those who make merry. I will multiply them and they shall not be small. They shall not diminish. So what is what is the Word of God saying here about having a thankful heart, making merry? That God is going to bless you in your life. And in other words, you're going to have more friends next year than you do this year. 
you're going to have a better social life next year. Not just that, but you're going to have more revelation in God's Word because you are now being a, a light of that Word in other people's life. We need to understand. Now, the opposite of this, see, we have a choice to make merry, to be thankful, and have the blessings of the Lord in negative situations. Or we can be like the people in Romans chapter 1. Let's turn there real quick. Romans chapter 1, verse 21. It says this. Starting at verse 20. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because though they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were they thankful. Wow. Well, that's a... See, to me it's a very simple thing to do. It wasn't bad theology. It wasn't... It was because they weren't thankful. They didn't glorify God, and they weren't thankful to God, but became... God didn't put the... Look, but they became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. God didn't darken their hearts. God didn't change their thoughts. They became it. They became the way they were thinking. They had a choice to be thankful in their life and not be small, but they chose not to be thankful to God and for what He's done in their life, and their thoughts became something. And as you go ahead and read down through this chapter, there's three different levels that happen in this, this, this chapter to this group of people. But I want you to know, God was there at each one of these stages, even at the worst of the worst, He was still there, ready for them to change the way they thought. Mm -hmm. To repent. That's what the word repent means. He was still there. And God gave them over. He didn't put it on them. He let... He I don't want you to... Let me put it this way. You ever been doing something you hear the Holy Spirit said, don't do that? Yeah. <laughs> don't do... Vicki, you shouldn't have said that so loud. <laughs> Give self talk. <laughs> yeah. Do it anyway. <laughs> do, do you need to confess it? No. <laughs> Wait, we're on camera. You, so, you, you ever hear the Holy Spirit, don't do that? And... You said, well, I mean, he said, don't do that. Don't do that. And you do it. And you got what you... He, he, he didn't put that on you. You got what you wanted. It was a consequence. You, you paid the consequence. And then you could not be thankful for that. And you, you, you could blame everybody in the world for that. And guess what? That kind of mindset will just grow and get larger and uglier and more negative. It will grow into a whole other, pretty soon, you're, what's it say? They, they, they actually denied the very nature of God and the way God made things. We're not going to get into that tonight. We could real quickly, but we're going to go on. So in Numbers, let me just show you this back in the Old Testament. In Numbers chapter 11. Oh, Joy, we don't have one verse, so don't worry about it. In Numbers chapter 11, uh, all the way 12, 13, 14, and 15, and 16, you'll see a pattern that takes place here. In Numbers chapter 11, you'll see that the children of Israel, they started murmuring. They started complaining. Look, look, look at... Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Joy. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now Hebrews? when the people complained, it just pleased Hebrews? the Lord. No, I'm sorry, Numbers. Numbers <laughs> chapter 11, verse 1. Now when the people complained... Listen, they just came... They were just... They were just delivered from Egypt. The blessings of the Lord are upon them. And they're starting to complain. <clears throat> and now we're not going to... This is a whole teaching in itself, but we don't have time for that. <laughs> and then by verse 4, I mean verse 5, uh, they, they were uh, discontented with the food. This is, this is manna from heaven. It's not like we're used to. And they started comparing their present time with their past time. Well, back then we had fish, we had garlic, we had leeks. God was giving them angel food. And they start see, but the complaining didn't start, excuse me, the, the discontentment didn't start until the complaining started. 
and it grew. And so you got you got a murmuring, a, a, a discontentment in verse 10. It gets into ungodly actions. And in verse 12, uh, in chapter 12, it gets into criticalness. And then now they're starting to get critical. In verse, uh, in chapter 13, they have a serious degree of unbelief. And it goes on and on and on. And you get down to chapter 16, they're in rebellion. Wow. Grow and grow. Sure. It didn't stop. Mm-mm. No. And they're responsible. It wasn't the devil made them do it. Mm. <laughs> Don't do that. They had a, you have, we have a choice. Yes, we do. To stop. If we don't, we're going to end up in rebellion and what? Death. It's our choice, people. Put screen number one. Oh, good timing. Complaining empowers the inferior to undermine your faith. You got that? Mm. When you're complaining, it empowers the inferior that's in you. Your old man, your old nature, your old way of thinking. It empowers that to rise up. So when the scripture in the book of Hebrews <coughs> says, cast off the old man and put on the new man, that's, you've got to quit empowering your old man to come alive. You never feel like hitting somebody when you're in a positive state of mind. You only feel like hitting somebody... And you're in a negative state of mind. Quit it. It's our <coughs> choice. If you want to change the atmosphere of your home, man, the first degree of honor is being thankful. You can't honor your parents without being thankful for your parents. You can't honor, you can't honor the Word of God. Are you thankful for the Word of God? You bet. Well, you, you'll never read it if you're not thankful for it. Matter of fact, to the degree that you're thankful for it, is the degree you'll read it. We're going to get into another word along with that goes right in this, and that's grateful. You realize there's a difference in being thankful and being grateful? Joy put number four on the board. When I was meditating on this and trying to figure out a way to explain the difference between thankful and grateful, thankful is a surface level. It's when something that is done and you respond to it. Grateful is an attitude of the heart. But you'll never be grateful. You'll never have that attitude of heart until you first plant the seed of thankfulness. It's like grateful is the fruit. Grateful, great, it's like uh, gratefulness is the is what you want. But you won't get there until you plant the seed, which is in the form of thankfulness. And thankfulness will produce gratefulness. And that gratefulness will produce what? More seed of thankfulness. And that's why we came up with this, this thing here. Gratefulness is, is the way of life, is a way of life. Thankfulness is the expression of it. Mm -hmm. So you could be thankful and not be a, grace, uh, a, a grateful person. You can take a person that's really down, I mean, not grateful and do something good to them and they can be thankful for that event. Matter of fact, the children of Israel did the same thing. Matter of fact, the law of Moses taught the children of Israel coming. You got to remember, they didn't know how to be humans. I, I tell this all the time. People think they had the Ten Commandments back when they were, and, and the Levitical law back when they were in bondage. Listen, when they went into bond, when they came into Egypt, there was only like 75 of them. They were just a big, big family. When they left Egypt, there was millions, okay? And they didn't have God's wisdom and his word, uh, the Ten Commandments and the Levitical law. And how to, they, they, they only knew God as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's why in Leviticus 15, the whole chapter is on how not to play with poop. <laughs> Read it! <laughs> I, sh I share that in the youth groups when I teach, and they just love that. They're, they're, they're doing, they go home and do Bible study right there. And there. They, 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 they want to, they, so I have to read some of the verses to them, and they're like, yep, they're not playing with poop. Yeah. You know, they didn't know how to be sanitary. They were slaves, people. And so coming out of slavery, they had to be taught certain things, and the law taught them how to be thankful. 
Do you realize the first fruits offering is a thanksgiving offering? Do you realize in Deuteronomy in different places, it says don't forget. Don't forget that the reason you have these things is because God gave them to you. In other words, stay thankful. Yes. Don't think you did it because of your wisdom and your knowledge and your great strength. No. God yes. delivered you and gave them to you. Stay thankful. Yes. That's right. But see, that's being thankful for the provision. Okay? That's a surface level thankfulness. That the law, say the law, the law, law, train them to do. They were thankful for, it's, you know, it's easy to be thankful. Any, you don't even have to be a Christian to be thankful for something. When someone does something good to you, it's just good common courtesy to say what? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's actually a, a response. When you say thank you, you're acknowledging that that person did something to you that you hadn't done to yourself at that moment. Not saying that you couldn't have done it, but they did it for you. They recognize you, and, and they even if you just say thank you and receive it, that's a common thing. That's surface level, but that thankfulness is supposed to lead us into gratefulness, which is a heart issue. And we see this in Psalms, uh, the twenty-third Psalms. See, Moses led them into a surface level thankfulness, but in the process of their living, David there was leading them into a deeper form. But watch this. In Psalms, the 23rd Psalm, Psalms 23. Everybody knows the Psalms, don't we? Oh, yeah. We'll go back and talk about this verse here in a second. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not. What? He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. soul. Oh, you got to understand that. It's your soul that needs to be restored. Your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, which makes up your will. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Now, does anybody have the NIV? You're not with me. Who, who has I didn't bring one. What version? I, I've got the New King James, which is a copy of the King James. Does anybody have any other version? I have ASV. ASV? Does, what's your, your say? I've got to go. In the next, the next verse, okay, the uh, verse 4. Psalms and 23.4. 23, 4. Okay, and number four says, yea, though I walk through the... So yours says yea. Uh -huh. See, mine says yea. <clears throat> but I look up the word yea, and you know what that means? Yes. Even. So the better translation is this. Listen to this. Even though I walk through the... Sure. It's just perfect. Yeah. You look it up in any anything you want to look it up in, it said the, the main definition, the word yea is even. Mm -hmm. So we can read it this way. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That's a phrase I want you to remember tonight. Even though. See, despite the circumstances, the Lord is a shepherd. He will not walk. He understands he'll be led into green pastures. That his soul's going to be restored despite the hardship he's going through. He's got God on his mind. He has a grateful heart because he, Moses got the law from God. But David got the heart of God when he was a boy out in the field experiencing God. He had a grateful heart. <clears throat> He was, thank you for, th he was thankful for the deliverance from the lion and the bear. He was thankful for all these things that happened. He was thankful when he killed... I mean, he had, been th he had seen God move in his life when he got stepped out in faith. And so it established something in his heart when he says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. How many of us are so unthankful for because we think we want something that we don't have? Wow. Would that line up with my cup runneth over? Oh, yeah. Or that's kind of the same thing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Look at verse 4 again. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no. Evil. That means he's in the midst of evil, people. But he's not afraid of it. Why? Because of his grateful heart. He understands who his Lord is. He's a See, it's called growing up. No. You know, I, I, I want to say this in a way... Uh, we, we'd come up here. Well, we, when we'd have Thanksgiving down home in Texas, where I was raised, 
you know, that we didn't have the big, well, I had four boys in my family, that's enough, enough for anybody, but, but we'd come up here, all the cousins would be, you know, and we'd meet in that, that little house right over there. All the cousins get together, you know, we'd have a big meal. You ever been in a big family with a, a, a lot of kids? Yeah. 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 And, and do you usually have two tables? One, one, I was going to bring in a card table. You know those wobbly card tables? The kids usually sit there. Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to bring in, you know, one of those uh, uh, first grade or kindergarten tables with the little blue chairs and the, you know, the little, the little set. Mm -hmm. See, that's, that's Thanksgiving. That, that's, that's, that's surface level. That's beginner. You know, they don't sit at the big table. They, children sit at the, the little table, right? You always put the little kids on the little table. And, and you always bring to them, you, you don't let them just come up and get one. No, you, we'll make your plate for you. Here. Mm -hmm. And you teach them to say thank you because it's they're thankful for what you've given them. And that's, anybody can do that. But what David is talking about here, what we're talking about here, is, you know, we shouldn't be big boys sitting at little boy tables. We should have grown to a place where we have a grateful heart. And out of that grateful heart, Thanksgiving comes forth naturally because it's the atmosphere of our life. Yeah. Are you naturally a, thank, a grateful person that Thanksgiving proceeds from? That is being a mature believer, understanding that the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want. Even in the midst of evil, he's leading you beside still waters. I'll show you how this works. Chapter, uh, verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. evil. For you are with me. Even when he's amidst the evil. Mm -hmm. Can you hear his gratefulness? He's not, this is not him avoiding these situations. This is him in those situations. Most American Christians want to get out of the situations. And I don't blame us. But it takes a mature believer. To be grateful in the midst of evil. Knowing that the Lord is a shepherd. Not that person. Not that situation. Not the government. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll feel no evil. For you are with me. Wow. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare... A table before me in the presence of my enemies. What table are you eating at? See, that's a big boy table. That's for adults. Can you sit at a table with your enemies? What's that say? <clears throat> See, I'm not, don't, don't, don't do that. Your enemies aren't the who. It's the what. Is a lack of trust, a lack of faith, anxiety, addiction. I don't care what to. Are these the enemies that plague your life, that create fear in your life, that it's evil? Can you sit at that? Is the word telling us that we can get to a place if we're thankful, if we start out being thankful at the little boy's table and we apply those principles that one day we can sit at the big boy table in the presence of our enemies. And now watch this. And not just partake, but you can partake. Who's at the table? Insecurities. Lack of education, raised wrong, raised right, you name it. What, 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 are the, what are the enemies that are keeping you from living godly? What, what, and believing and, 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 and trusting in, oh, trusting in what? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leadeth me beside still waters. In the midst of a raging storm, yeah, you can have still waters in your heart. In the midst of America going to pot, 
You can be at peace. I got news for you. The enemies are coming. If we don't learn to deal with the enemies now, we won't know how to deal with them later. How do we deal with them? By being thankful. We plant the seeds of gratefulness in the form of thanksgiving. And they'll mature. And you'll go from the little boy's table. I say boys because I was raised in a family of poor boys, okay? I remember sitting at that little table. And I remember the day. I remember when they, I got to sit at the big table. <laughs> I'm sitting next to my Uncle Keith. I hope you hear this someday, Uncle Keith. <laughs> and he realized I'm a big boy now. And I asked him to pass the butter. <laughs> okay? No, this has nothing to do with scripture, okay? It's just a story. I asked him to pass the butter. And if you know my Uncle Keith, or if you know any of my uncles, he said, sure. He grabbed, it was a, you know, the, the butter tray, the stick of butter, it's all soft and everything. And he took the, it, he went like this, and he was going to, and I went like this to grab it, and he shoved the butter, right my thumb right into the butter. It's like, and he just grinned. <laughs> Here I'm holding this butter, like, <laughs> just a memory, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I had, the, I mean, in the presence of my, look, listen to what this says here. Verse, uh, verse 5, you prepare a table before me. And what do you do at a table? You take in. In the presence of my enemies. Enemies. See, there's going to come a time in your life when you realize that God can use your enemies, your failures, your faults, the negative things in your life that plague you as fuel, as opportunity for growth. Things you can, oh, instead of looking at bringing guilt, you're going to say, oh, I can overcome that now because the word of God. Those, listen, you're going to be eating from the table that your enemies are sitting at. And you won't be moved by them, they'll be moved by you. I love what the scripture says. And guys, I think every male needs to hear this. The scripture says, flee! <laughs> Run! <laughs> You know, when you're, don't sit there as a newborn believer, Christian, and you, you've got a problem with, like most of you, most guys have, you know, problem with uh, young ladies. Run! The scripture says, run! Don't sit there and see how brave you are. Hopefully. You'll lose. <laughs> but then when you grow up, it says, stand. Mm -hmm. When you've done all you can do, stand. See, there's a growth pattern in our, in our Christian walk. And some people are still living at the little boy's table and they haven't used the word of God to transition to the big boy table. Because it's from the big boy table you can change the world around you. You can be affected. You can be more than just thankful for substance. That what you See, the law, Moses taught them to be thankful for their provision. The big boy table, you're thankful for, you learn to be thankful for the vision. In other words, you won't see it. See, they saw it and were thankful for it. At the big boy table, the word says it, you may not see it, but you believe it. And the enemies would try, no, the enemies aren't going to keep you from doing it. You're going to be able to, you'll have the vision. Of what God's word says about you in your life. See, the truest thing about you is what God says about you. Yeah. It's not your past. It's not what you think about you. Now, you're affected in your life. You're affected by what you think about you more than including the word of God. But the word of God is the truest thing about you. So we need to learn what the word of God says about us so we can know what the truest thing about us is. He doesn't see us in our sin. He sees us in our spirit. Man, I tell you, we got it. That was the last couple months we've been dealing with that. The thing we need to do when we're sitting at the big boy table is identify what our enemies are. I didn't say who. That's the first thing we want to go to, isn't it? 
It's not identifying who, because we wrestle not against what? Flesh, flesh and blood. blood, but against principalities and powers. So you need to recognize what your enemies are in your own life. I can't tell you. You can't tell me the enemies in my life. I need, when I'm at my table, I, I, as I'm knowing the Lord is my shepherd and I, I'm going through life, I know the things that are always attacking me. I need to recognize what those are and get to the point that I see that the Word of God with thanksgiving has the answer to that situation and I now can overcome it. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. I've said this for years, the greatest confession out of your mouth. Two, two things, two greatest confessions. Jesus is Lord, and be it unto me. Just like Mary, the Virgin Mary. Mm -hmm. Jesus is Lord, and be it unto me according to your word. Man, those are, you need to, that needs to be your confession out of your, that needs to be coming out of your heart. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies, and you anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Where's he at? He's in the presence of his enemies. He's in the presence of the what? I don't have time to get into all the notes. Moses taught people to be thankful for the, for the, for the, that, 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 that. David was teaching us how to be thankful for even though. Even though. Even though you're in the valley of the shadow of death. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. Man. Last verse, Hebrews chapter 13. See what happens when I stick to my notes? <laughs> and Dan's not even here. No, <laughs> no, he's not. Here. <laughs> you tell Dan a miracle happened in Bible study tonight. <laughs> He missed that one. Curtis stayed on his notes. We have to mark that on the calendar. Yeah. <laughs> Probably will never happen again. We'll have a banquet. Probably too. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 13. And we were going to share this in, 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 uh, in uh, Wilmer. And I never got to it. Never got to it. Hebrews chapter 13. What verse? Verse 12. Therefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his blood, suffered outside the gate. Now, that's something I wish we had time to talk about tonight. Because he didn't suffer, suffer inside the gate. He suffered outside. outside. See, if he would have suffered inside the gate, he would have brought us into the, the Jewish religion. But he was outside the city of religion, outside the gate. Hmm. Oh, yeah, we could talk about that all night long. Therefore, let us go forth to him outside the camp, <laughs> bearing his reproach. For, for here we have no continuing city, Jerusalem, uh, but we seek the one to come, the heavenly Jerusalem. Verse 15. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. Say sacrifice. 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 Hmm. That is the fruit of our lips. Mm -hmm. Noise has to come out. Sure. You have to say, thank you. Yes. You have to praise with your mouth open and wind coming out and sounds and vocal cords. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer a sacrifice. Why do they call it a sacrifice? Because there's going to be times when you're in the valley of the shadow of death and you're not going to feel like it. There's going to be times you're at the big boy table and your enemies are speaking louder than... But you're going to have to give a sacrifice. 
A sac do, you, do you realize sacrifices didn't want to do it? The only sacrifice that wanted to do it was Jesus. Therefore, therefore by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. I don't know if I can say it any better. Other than the fact, I don't bring your attention. Who's he talking to in the book of Hebrews? The Hebrews. The ones that have been trained under the law of Moses to be thankful just for what they see. And now he's saying, even when you don't see it, let it come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Let it be a sacrifice. See, Thanksgiving is the master key to the king of the heaven. Keys to the kingdom of heaven. It's such a simple thing. Bob and Helen, we're thankful for you. Mm -hmm. We are. We're going to miss you. Mm -hmm. And you know it. <laughs> Man. I have a question. Yes, 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 yes. yes. So, maybe you guys know the answer to this. I actually have somebody that I talk to once in a while who is Jewish. Okay. And uh, I'm just curious. what. So those that do not believe that Jesus came, you know, and, and that he was the son of God. Okay. That um, he's the... That didn't fulfill any On a prophecy. Jewish mind, mindset? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That he's not the so, Messiah. So what do they do now for... Do they make sacrifices still? Uh, they have... Uh, no, they can't, according to old scriptures, they don't have a temple. That's why they're trying to rebuild a temple now. Oh. Oh, we got the five the five heifers. Or they only needed one, but they got five red heifers. Because they need the ashes and of the red now, heifer to cleanse it. They've just now become of age that they can actually sacrifice. Some people believe they've already sacrificed one. They've, they've been sacri practicing their sacrifices. They, but also, they don't have the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, They don't have... Yeah. But but they... they no, but there, there are certain things that they do to counter that. Uh, because in AD 70, when the temple was destroyed, that's when their religion was to, to bunk. Oh. Okay, eighty seventy, the temple is destroyed. There can no more sacrifices. There was no, there was no Jewish nation after eighty seventy. They didn't speak Hebrew. After eighty seventy, they were dispersed amongst all the nations of the world at the time, and they were taken captive, and they learned the language in which the country they lived in. Believe it or not, there's actually a prophetic scripture in scripture that says that, that the language that once was will be again. Talking about the book, the, the language of Hebrew, because it wasn't spoken again until the, er, until the middle of the 1800s. Right. And it wasn't taught in a great, the first grade school to Jewish children that taught Hebrew in the grade school it was like in 1928. It wasn't... It's it's a God has revamped just to, to prove the just to make the prophecy come to pass, he's revamped the Hebrew language again. Because it wasn't a nation, it it was a nation that wasn't a nation. And now in nineteen forty eight, Israel became a nation. So, uh, so, the, so the people who um, don't make any sacrifices and, and they don't believe in Jesus, they haven't had a place to make sacrifices. So what is their destiny? Hell. Oh, man. Well, because I'm talking to this guy. Yeah. And I'm there, there, there's, to... They know according to their law, there's not a, unless a sacrifice is paid for. Now, they have mm -hmm. different things they've adopted to, to take care of that. <clears throat> but Jesus is the final yeah. sacrifice. And if they don't believe that Jesus is the Christ, Christ is not his last name. Christ means the anointed one. He's the Messiah. And the whole purpose, and I, I, I'm going to, God loves the Jewish people. I am not anti-Semitic at all, but the Bible says the purpose for the tribulation period is to bring the Jewish people to a place where they call upon the name of the Lord and recognize Him as blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. I pray they do. And one, one third of the Jewish population will be saved at that point, but two thirds would have died during the tribulation. Rick. Uh, real important for you to know, though, you always say the Jews didn't follow, you know, the law. That's not true. 
at the time Jesus died on the cross, and after that, over half a million Jewish people accepted him as Lord and Savior. Correct. Because yes. all the disciples were Hebrew, the 120 right. in Correct. the room, Hebrew, yep. the 5,000, yep. the 3,000. And the first church followed some of the, the laws of the Old Testament. That was the problem when they went in. After that first uh, church got started, when Paul started going out in the Gentile world, the Jewish church, Christian church, not the Jewish religion, the Jewish religion is against Jesus. Okay. Okay. Well, that's not true. No, the first religion. Of all, the first, the, the religion. first church was the Jewish people in the synagogue. When Paul started bringing the Gentiles, they worshipped together in the synagogue. Right. In the first, in the next hundred years, over a million Jewish people but, were killed for following Jesus. But those, but those, right. right. But those Jews that lived according to the law believed but that in. That was a small percentage. But they, they believed in Jesus. That's what made them part of the church. There was Jews that didn't believe in Jesus, and but they're that not was a small percentage. But but they're not part of the church. That's why I'm saying the religion of the Jewish religion that does they, the Jewish religion doesn't believe Jesus is the Messiah. No. But that's not necessarily true either. I really believe there's more Jewish people have accepted Jesus and are filled with the Holy Spirit than Gentiles right now. You got Jonathan Kahn. I was in Washington right. D.C. We had two million people. We telecast it to twenty-four million around the world. We brought in two million Gentiles worship together. I, I agree with you a hundred percent. Four million Jews and Gentiles came together. We walked and prayed around the Capitol together. We had four days of worship yes. together. The Holy Spirit dropped. The, uh, Thank you, Jesus. People, yes. the Absolutely. Uh, Franklin Graham people were, were filled mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit. The glory cloud came in and people were knocked on their butt. That was Jew and Gentile coming back together, worshiping Correct. together the first time in 2,000 years. And that has to happen before Jesus comes back. And I think we will see the Antichrist in these wars. He'll come forward to yep. solve these wars and be lifted up. Yep. Now, then the United States, which is happening now, 50% of the people do not accept the Jew oh. Jew Jewish people. Yep. Therefore, that the whole United States will go anti-Jewish, which allows the final battles to happen, Correct. which are very close to happening yep. right now. But the point I'm making is, if you go to Jerusalem and you witness to someone the gospel, Jesus Christ, under 18 years old, you're going to jail. Prosel proselyting someone under age in Jerusalem is against the law. They st they're still believing in the Messiah coming. There but are a lot of young lot, people, the young people by the thousands yeah, are, they're thousands coming, to the are coming to the Lord. To the Lord right Absolutely. Now. I meet thousands but of that them. is contrary. In Mexico, oh, I need hundreds yes, of Jewish people. Yes, I know you do. To Jesus I'm just Savior. saying the, the, the law of the Jewish people, We're not the ones that have revelation. Of them. If they have they're revelation, they're free from that law. Now, there's nothing wrong with living in a, in a culture, you've got to have a lifestyle. I can show you a scripture in uh, in Revelations where it says those that had faith in Jesus and obeyed the commandments of God, both together. Living like a Jew is not a problem. It, live, if you're Jewish, live like a Jew. There's no, I have no problem with someone being uh, a Catholic if they're born again. If you're born again and a Jew, praise God. But if you're a Jew and not born again, but that's true for all of us. Yes, I was just saying. I said that. I said that for Catholics. I'll say that for Baptists. I'll and say that for cowboy churches down in Texas. You got to have some type of culture that you live through. You have to. Right, but that's the key. It's all. It's probably ninety-five percent of the people in this world haven't accepted Jesus. That's right. But a high percentage of the Jewish people have. They've been punished for that for two thousand years through a lie because. A half a million of them accepted mm -hmm. Jesus. They wrote the New Testament. Correct. They wrote the New Old yep. Testament. So if they didn't accept Jesus, they wouldn't have wrote the New Testament. Correct. They wouldn't have been in the upper room, the 120. That's right. There's no Gentiles there at all. The 5,000 at Pentecost, the yep. 3,000, all Amen. Jewish people. That's right. Uh, the first half of the book of Acts is all Jewish people. That's right. Absolutely. I'm not in disagreement at all. But that isn't said at all in the churches. They should lift it up because they're God's chosen people. They are like his kids. 
And when they're put down, which they're put down all the time, you're putting down God because these are his chosen people and our whole salvation is through the Jewish people. The only thing we as Gentiles did when it was broken off, the Gentile come in just like a tree branch, wrap up and tie the Jewish people together. But we are tied to the Jewish people, our very salvation. And the, you know, I believe what the scripture says, where it says that when you're born again, when you have that new spirit from God into your old, whether you're Jew, Gentile, whatever, that you're not that anymore. Right. You're one new creature that's never, the word new means never existed before. We're a new creature. I'm not Gentile anymore. Right, that's true. I'm not. And a Jew that's born again can still live like a Jew, but in God's eyes, he's not even a Jew. He's a new creature. He's now the bride of Christ. Right. Transformed. See, see a Jew, what we need to understand, in the Old Testament, God married the Jews. They were his special people. He picked them out. He said, I want them. Yeah. And he chose them, and he married them in Exodus chapter 19 and 20. And But we're the bride of Christ. There's actually two brides in Scripture. One is the bride of God, and one's the bride of Christ. And so we need to understand that when you get born again from above, you're neither male or female, rich or poor, Jew or Gentile. We have a, we're a new person. And my faith isn't based on my obedience to any of my culture. This is, I'm in a new kingdom. Yeah. I'm in a new kingdom. And everything Jesus taught as a Jew to Jews was the kingdom of heaven is like unto this. It was preparing the Jewish people to make the transition into the kingdom of heaven that's on earth. It starts out this way. You know, the first thing that Jesus said when he started ministering was repent for the kingdom, kingdom of heaven is at hand. Who was he speaking to? He wasn't speaking to Gentiles. Speaking to Jews. Were they repenting from sin? No. They had to change the way they were thinking from this covenant to a new covenant. Yes. It's when you believe that you're, you, what you do makes you right with God, it's called self-righteousness. But anybody in any culture, if you trust in what Jesus has done for you, making you right with God, it doesn't matter what culture you live in. I can live like, like I said, a Baptist, a Lutheran, a, 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 I'm not going to say that, but <laughs> a cowboy church, a Presbyterian, it, as long as you're trusting Jesus. him, the culture doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No. Other than he's coming back to Jerusalem and he comes back as a torrent observant Jew the way he left. Yeah, uh, but I'll have to add this, Rick. I want no. you to think about this. Not of the order of Levi, the Levitical order, but the order of Melchizedek. Yeah. Right, but he comes back as a torrent observant Jew and we will Under the order of Melchizedek. Hebrew because the language of Israel right now is Hebrew. Do you realize in the Old Testament, which isn't old at all, 40,000 times it says Jesus is your Lord and Savior mm -hmm. in Hebrew, but Constantine yep. translated the Bible in Greek and didn't allow a single Jewish person to translate it, so it isn't translated, it's Correct. in black and white in Correct. color. So 40,000 times yep. it tells the Jewish people, Jesus is your Savior. Savior. Why are the young people and people come to the Lord? They're reading their Bible in Hebrew and realizing the Israel And they're Savior. finally reading Isaiah 53, right. which they hadn't been reading Isaiah 53 well, for many years. Well, the million did, and the ones that wrote that book surely yeah. did, because they wrote every dot and tittle right. in the Bible. And there's a whole lot of Jews that never heard it. But there's a whole lot of... There's, there's a great... Matter of fact... Does there's everybody under 16 million Jews in the world? Does everybody Africa understand when, when uh, Joshua led the children of Israel into the Promised Land? Moses couldn't lead them in, but Joshua could. What's the name Joshua? Jesus. Yeah, sure. So you have a parallel here between Moses and Jesus. Who was uh, Joseph? Uh, excuse me, um, Joshua's right hand person. Caleb. Caleb. Caleb was Joshua's right-hand person. Do you know what the word Caleb means? It means dog. When Jesus was talking to the woman, he says, it's not right for me to give what's meant for the children of Israel to the dog. She was a Gentile. 
She was a Gentile. But who did the speaking for Joshua as he went in? Who come in? See, I believe that God use, has been using the Gentile world to speak into the world of Israel to bring them out of the unbelief in Jesus being the Messiah to believe Jesus is the Messiah. Absolutely, I believe that the, our world, the Gentile world, has spoken in to the Jewish people that didn't even exist. They were scattered. And since they've been brought back, the gospel has gone into there. And there's like, Rick, he's right, there's more, more Jews being saved today. Matter of fact, I'm going to say this out loud. There's Islam, uh, Islamic people being saved by dreams and visions. That's right. They can't hear, the, you can't speak the word to them, but God can. And also through the big TV stations that oh. we criticize, the Muslim people are seeing that on, on TV and they're coming to the Lord in big numbers. Yep. See, it's not just up, I mean, God is bigger than us. Amen? Can I give you one that's really sure. important? I'll teach you a Hebrew word. Every word in Hebrew has the word God in it. Mm -hmm. Every word in Hebrew has the word, to, the power to heal. The word you know that wasn't thrown out by Constantine is hallelujah. You know how that makes you feel so good? That's two Hebrew words. Here's what it means. Raise your hands and praise to Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Where is Jesus and hallelujah? His name is Yahweh, Yeshua, Yeshua HaMashiach. Mm -hmm. When you break his name down, it says, see the hand, see the nailed hand, your Savior Jesus. The word is salvation. His whole name has the whole gospel in yes. it. Yes. Jesus. That's why he said the name above all, all, all names. names. Yeah. See the name, G when, it, when we read that scripture that Jesus is the name of what names are he talking about? Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Mekedesh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Sidkenu, all the different names of God that are mentioned in the Old Covenant or the Old Testament are wrapped up into one name. That's right. Jesus. Salvation. That's it. It's all in Jesus. Or Yeshua Mashiach. Well, Jesus is a Greek, Greek name for how to say Yeshua. And I got it from Mark, an expert, by the way. He is an expert. He he said, "Don't worry about not saying the word Jesus, the name right. Jesus." He he firmly agrees. We can say Jesus without yeah. saying Yeshua. Without the at all. Amen. But what it means is salvation. The whole gospel is in His name. Yep. See the hand, see the nail, man, the cross. Jesus, your yes. Savior. Yes. Amen. So then, all the people, the people who are coming back to um, uh, go to the people who are. Um, to go through the tribulation, and they're in the middle of the tribulation. There's like 144,000 people that are going to be coming in. Well, there's 144,000 witnesses. Witnesses that are going to be coming in. Those are Jewish people. Yes, okay. They're going through the whole world. Okay. Preaching the gospel. And okay. Jonathan Kahn might be the first one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, go ahead. Ask the question. No, that was it. I was oh. just wondering if they were going to be Jewish people and, yeah. <coughs> and uh, if they would be going to other Jews to get them to. Turn they're going to be going. Yeah. During, the, during that tribulation period of time, there's going to be 144,000 anointed by God missionaries right. going throughout the whole world and two witnesses in Jerusalem. Right. That, you know, they're going to be. People have different opinion who they're going to be, but. It's, but they're going to be on TV every night. They're going to be doing signs and wonders and miracles. Uh, Antichrist is going to kill them, but they're going to come back to life, all on TV. I mean, this is all stuff that's going to take place during that tribulation period. Okay. And like everything that. is in line for that to happen with yes. Russia within a doorstep of China because of Ukraine now took over Afghanistan. They can have their armies down there. It is so scary right because now. Because Ukraine war, now Russia and China are back together again in all those countries. So right now, they, the Jewish people feel the Antichrist is going to come out of these wars. Mm -hmm. Then the United States is going to turn against Israel. That will allow all these battles. Two-thirds of the Jewish people will be killed. Yep. A glory cloud will come over Israel. And the bombs and that will not get through it. And that's when Jesus comes back Correct. to save his Jewish people. That's right. Not a and he won't come back until they say, Blessed is he who comes in the name that's of the right. Lord. That's what they should have said in Luke chapter 19 on the triumphal entry. Right. Can I, can I just... Half a million did. Remember that the vast majority accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. Oh, no, right. You know, and actually, to, to throw in more history here, what's really cool is that 
uh, Jesus, the ones that believed the words of Jesus, when he said, when you see the abomination of the desolation, flee for the hills. And in, 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 in 68 AD, the first Roman <coughs> legion came and surrounded Jerusalem, but didn't have enough uh, supplies to continue the siege on Jerusalem. And so they withdrew and left. And see, in AD 70, 1,100,000 Jews were killed in the temple trying to save the temple. 1,100,000. But the Christians did, the Jewish Christians didn't die because they listened to the words of Jesus and they fled two years earlier out of Jerusalem into the hills and the other cities around. I mean, these things, if they listened to the words of Jesus, they were saved. If they weren't, and right there, 1,100,000 Jews, and that's uh, just I, history. This little thing that we were talk, have been talking about tonight would be great to have on a piece of paper so you can look <laughs> Oh, we don't use paper around here. You can listen to it again. Oh. There is um, a, a ministry that you, uh, a YouTube ministry that you can refer your friend to. It's called One for Israel. Okay. And it's, yeah. it's great. And it's actually a lot of young kids. That, and they are ministering to Jews and Arabs. Okay. The word one or the number one? The word one. O-N-E for okay. Israel. Yeah. Okay. And there, there is a great, and you're going to see more and more salvations, uh, just not Jewish, but across the, I mean, some people believe that 144,000 will be the greatest revival that's ever been on the, okay? Some people say no because of the deception that's going to be in the world. So there's a combination of things going on. What do the people here in the United States and wherever, uh, when if something like Hamas came in okay. and, and did the things to our families or something, if they're here in the United States waiting for whatever, uh, is this something that we're supposed to fight? Or are we supposed to do as Jesus did and, and uh, not show? Jesus them? told his disciples, if you don't have a sword, go buy one to protect okay, so yourself. And you can do this. Okay. The, the Bible is all for self-defense. Okay. But also, we have the glory cloud over us. When we ask Jesus in, the Holy Spirit protects us. So we will be protected through a lot of that yeah. thing if we hold on to him. Just like he was saying tonight, if we hold on to him and give him thanks. The Lord is my protected. shepherd. If we realize he's our shepherd, he'll lead us. I mean, we'll have a protection. Doesn't mean everything's going to go your way. I guarantee you that. But he is your protection. Amen. You know, even in the old early church, people were crucified, they were burned alive, they were put on stakes, and the Lord was their shepherd. You know, but they had to be wise. You yeah. know, there was wisdom. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh yeah, greatest statement. They, oh. they, they, they were they were government leaders and well respected by the king. But he was mad because they didn't bow at this little statue he had. Mm. And so they said, he gave them another chance. Go ahead. If, if you just bow, gave him another chance. They said, King, our God will deliver us. Even if he doesn't, just be assured we're not going to bow. So he See, that's your mad. face statement. Yeah, that's your face. Even if he doesn't. We know he can. But even if he doesn't, we're not going to bow. And so the king was mad, made the furnace seven times hotter than it was so that even the soldiers throwing them in died because of the heat. Mm -hmm. So they were bound, right? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the king looks and he says, didn't we throw three guys in there? Yeah. 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 And, uh, well, I see four. Yeah. But when they came out, not a hair of their head was singed. Their clothes didn't smell like smoke. Right. The only That's thing that burned the was their bondage. And the, the, the thing we need to understand, too, is that that uh, our faith is in our Lord. Mm -hmm. It's not in our situation. That's right. Keep your eye on Him. That's it. Not on Republicans, Democrats. Oh, people. no, we can't. Oh, gosh, none of that's good. Don't get involved with that. That's all worldly junk. Yeah, but anyway, so... He's our shepherd. He, even when we go through the valley, the shadow of death, we can still right. be thankful. That's right. We can still understand. We can sit at the big boy table. And do you think any of the stuff that's happening um, 
is going to be the mark that they give up, put on you, the mark of the beast. Like, uh, uh, what, and I, I don't know, but what will it be? Will it be something in a shot? No, no. Well, no, so it, no, it will be something obvious that you have to make a choice. Because once you take the mark of the beast, there, there's a, we can't get into it. There, there's his name. Matter of fact, if, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's three things that you can either have. You can have his name, his mark, or his number. It's not just one thing. There's his name, his mark, or his number. There's the name of the beast, the mark of the beast, and the number of the beast. And um, you take that on purpose. You don't take it. You can't give, be giving it to you accidentally and not knowing. Okay. Because once you take that, you can't be saved. Yeah, that's that's why I was curious mm -hmm. if there's things that they could put in no, a shot. That was, no, no. It's, you know. A lot of people thought, you know, the COVID, that's not a... It, it's literally, you won't be able to buy or sell. You don't have to say, no, I, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Mm -hmm. He leadeth me beside still waters. Amen. Whether you die or don't die. Amen. Whether you suffer. Listen, the last part of the, Hebrew, the Hebrews 11, the Hall of Fame of Faith. The first part sounds real good. Don't, leave, don't read the last couple verses. Mm -hmm. Women receiving their husbands back with their heads cut off. Mm -hmm. Burned alive. What's happening in Israel now? Yeah, Jerusalem. absolutely. So, I mean, our, it's not our circumstance. This is just a temporary life. This is temporary. The best thing I, I suggest everybody to do is get what is called the Fox's Book of Martyrs and see how God can even use the persecution of a person to bring others to his presence. Mm -hmm. There's great stories in there about people that, you know, Stephen fell asleep when he's being stoned. Do you realize that? Mm -hmm. Yes, he died. But the scripture says he fell asleep. Does that mean he wasn't feeling any pain? Dan. Quick short story. About three years ago, a buddy of mine, John in Mal uh, Wisconsin, is a pastor there. I was whining to him about, you know, the Muslims and the beheading and stuff like that. He goes, well, Danny, I'd, I'd rather have my head chopped off any day than die in my sleep. What? Are you, are you crazy? And he shares the story. Those nineteen men, you know, they dressed them in orange, and then yeah, they right. systematically lopped their heads off. Mm -hmm. It's a testimony. He said for every person that they killed, a hundred thousand Muslims came to know Jesus mm. through that. And, and through, you through realize dreams that, that you know God had sent all them. over. And it's like, what? What do these people have? I wouldn't die for. Them. What do these people have? They begin to question, you know, their their own yeah, they must faith, believe. you know. Yeah, yeah. They must have believed or they wouldn't have done it. Yeah. Now, here's how to witness the Muslims. They are really related to Jesus through Abraham, yes. Sarah, yes, they and are. the Jesus line. Hagar was Muslim, right. but came, uh, the uh, you know, the other. And so they came through that line. So I always tell them on the street, do you realize you're related to the Jewish people? They don't realize through Hagar, and Hagar followed our God and loved our God. And mm -hmm. basically, you can tell them they're seven hundred, or they're twenty six hundred years late. There was a covenant made for twenty six hundred years before the Muslim faith was even formed, and they're copying the Bible and throwing things in and out of it. But basically, they are related. Absolutely, they're cousins. Matter of fact, the forefathers. The scripture literally says, the forefathers. Of the prince to come. In other words, when Muhammad started the that religion, Muslim that faith. belief system, all the forefathers before him believed in Yeshua. They believed in Elohim, they, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jehovah. Mm -hmm. They they believed in Jehovah. And it changed with the introduction to Islam. Then mm -hmm. he started bringing them to a different God, a different belief system. But Hagar believed in G or in All of them did. All the yeah. all of those. Right. Hagar the what's the the third wife's name? Keturah. Keturah. Uh, Keturah, all those people believed in Ab the God of Abraham. Was he was the father of them all. Yeah. He was actually a land thing, just like a farmer given land. He, God gave the land to the Jewish people, not his his brothers and also the Muslim mm -hmm. people. 
So he, he gave them land, but not the land of Israel. And the land of Israel is a lot bigger than what it is right there. Right. No, they've chopped away at it. You know, they've, which most people said, don't do it. <laughs> but they did. So. Yeah, well, I took you guys on a really long trip, but I was just so No, that's great. We love, that's, this is what Freedom Fellowships, when we go like other places. Now, we meet here on Monday, but other places we're just there for once a month. And we sit around and do this for hours. Okay. But now I'm Jewish, so I do understand some of it. <laughs> okay. And so I I've been studied in Hebrew University. I've studied in Hebrew University for the last 15 years in Jerusalem. So what would you say to somebody, what, if another Jewish person that doesn't believe in Jesus, what would you say that would maybe make a difference in their thoughts? That's the Holy Spirit. Read their Bible. Read the, oh, yeah. Read their There's Bible. certain but they don't Bible, talk, they don't different. use the new he doesn't use the New Testament. No, but the, a lot of them do. Jonathan Kahn uh, and and uh, Yeah, but there's some that don't others that oh. haven't, but there's a higher percentage. But what's happened because they're back in Jerusalem reading the Hebrew Bible, they're starting to see that Jesus is their savior. Some of the greatest teachers of Bible I learned from, they're Messianic Jews in Jerusalem. Some of the hits on Jewish sites are hit over 50 million times. The Jewish people are starting to look, and if they're under real persecution now, they're going to go back to Jesus because they're going to be killed if they don't. Right. The one thing that I said that maybe made a difference to him is I said to him when he was talking about the end, I said, what if you're wrong? Same thing. See, but they're the same as everybody else. There's only two sides of the battle. Jesus, Holy Spirit, God, or the demonic and that. You're, there's two sides on this battle. If you're on the other side, you're in a bad place. Yeah. 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 So, I, I mean, I well, think he sat and thought about that. I said, well, I mean, if you do say, if you do say, I believe in Jesus, yeah. I mean, you can go ahead and, and look for eternal life. But if you don't ever give your heart to him... Yeah, What's the difference? You're gonna go. You're gonna go to hell. I mean, well, the, the greatest thing. Everybody. Yeah, the, the, yeah. the greatest. I believe about ninety-five percent of the people on this earth haven't accepted Jesus as right. Lord and Savior. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The greatest thing you can do for Him is ask the Holy Spirit to speak to Him. Right. That's right. Because without, the book of John. With, without the revelation, the yeah. without the revelation, Romans. either one. I'm gonna say this again. Without the revelation of Yeshua, That's right. mm -hmm. it's just legalistic. Yeah, well, if it's not to... revealed in his heart, yeah. you can't I... sell the gospel. No, I, I just pointed out all of the things in the Old Testament um, that said that he was coming. And, you know, like, why wouldn't you believe that it was him? He did all of those things right. that were mentioned. Yeah. And, well, Isaiah 53. Yeah, they've been killed by the millions of people carrying crosses. I mean, you say the Muslims killed the Jews. The vast majority of Jews have been killed by people who say they love Jesus, they love Mary, they love this. They really don't. But that's the one thing you can say. At the end, say, you know what, we've disagreed, but I have to tell you one thing. If you're ever in trouble, you call out in the name of Jesus, he'll be there to love you. And then also what he said, I pray that they send a vision so you will that's understand right what I'm saying. So let the Holy Spirit Confirm. change them, not us. Because our words don't make a thing. Jesus and the Holy Spirit changes everything. What I say means nothing. We just plant seeds. Yep. Okay. Some plant some water, but God brings the increase. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Well, he's been willing to, to look at the things that I've sent to him. And Do you know anything about prophecies? Uh, well, I, I know that they happened a lot, and there are people now there's, that are giving there's, prophecies. In the, in, in the Old Testament, there's prophecies of the Messiah coming on the exact time, day, and place into Jerusalem. And that happened in Luke chapter 19 to the very day it took place. It fulfilled, it fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies of that happening that the Messiah. We can show you in Scripture where, like you said, the majority of people believe that Jesus was the Messiah. It was the politics the, poli the politicians, the Pharisees, that's why I call it politics, the Gentiles, the Romans. The, that it was them that didn't believe in, the, that they didn't, actually some, I believe some believe that Jesus was Messiah and killed him anyway. Yeah. Now the one thing, and this is, we just learned this, I actually get to study the Bible in the original scrolls it was written in, there's really, the Bible says there's two Jewish, there's the Jews that didn't follow Jesus, 
the disciples. There's a verse in the Bible that talks their disciples. So the ones that followed him were disciples. The ones that went off were the Jews. Correct. Does that make any sense? Mm. Yeah. So it's really an interesting... The, the, the whole thing is, is Jesus our Lord? Yeah. yeah. Do, are we trusting our salvation on what he has done? Are we trusting on an obedience to a law that doesn't exist for salvation anymore. Yeah. You, know, you would be you would be somebody that a lot of churches around here would probably love to have you come there. Yes, they won't. Well, that's exactly He's wrong. <laughs> no, I have to say, really? they, Pastor Coker and his wife met with a man who's the foremost authority in the upper Midwest in Hebrew and Hebrew studies. He's on the top educational boards of the Jewish people that teach education all over the world. We have asked over a thousand pastors to have him talk. You know how many pastors have allowed him to talk? How? Zero. Oh my gosh, the that's only so crazy. pastor in the last 15 years that would talk to him was Pastor Coker. And, it, and if the people they so blessed, by the way. and they read it, I studied the Bible for 50 years. I started to study the Hebrew. I knew nothing. It was like black and white. But you learn from him. The people that come, but not one of the thousand will even come to listen to him talk. Yeah. Wow. Because yeah. the Jewish people are considered down here. If they just come to the Lord, what you forget is they're God's chosen people. They're like his ma or his kids. We should be lifting them up, saying, oh, yeah. "Thank you for writing the Bible. Thank you for yeah. the you know." They talk about uh, Luther got the Holy Spirit. Well, gee, there were 120 no. Jewish people, and then 5,000 that received the Holy Spirit, and that changed the world. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Paul, Paul even Paul up. even challenges the Gentiles. He says, "Hey, he don't forget their reason that you're here. The, they're the reason we can be saved, the Jews." And also, Paul brought in just a small, small segment of Gentiles. The vast majority that came to him were Jews. The Jews knew the Bible, at least the Old Testament. Us Gentiles, we're the wild dogs. We didn't know anything. We're into all kinds of pagan practices. We weren't. Very, uh, you know, we didn't know that stuff very good. The Jewish least did. Well, wasn't Peter like one of? He did his sermon, and did he bring like three or five thousand people, you know, to the Lord that day after, right after he received the Holy Spirit and went yeah. out and 5, three three thousand were added to the church the first day the Holy Spirit showed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now, and those were Jews. Yeah, but remember the Holy Spirit was here before Jesus came. It was in the Jewish temple once. One Jewish rabbi got to go in once a year to go in the Holy of Holies and be in the Holy Spirit. They had to put a rope around him to pull him out <laughs> because out. he wouldn't want to come back. But if you want to hear somebody speak that up. really knows, yeah. Pastor Mark Hume is a foremost authority in the upper yeah. Midwest. He's on educational boards with the Jewish people that teach Hebrew and this all over the world. Huh. And he lives in... Uh, he lives in Henning, Minnesota. Actually, no, it's it's in Leaf Leaf uh, Lake. Leaf Lake. I was there Leaf yesterday. Lake. Wow, wow. Yeah. really? Yeah, because I mean, he, I he's just a brilliant, brilliant. That's real close to you, by the way. What's that? Leaf Lake. You go right through there on the way down. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was at his house yesterday. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Mm -hmm. No, it just seems like people because of what's going on, like to see like what. And what's happening that's all falling in line yes, with what's going to happen is yeah. that you'd think that that they would, all the pastors Wake from up. the area would yeah. come and that they would like tell people, this is what's happening, this we is probably, what's coming. We probably asked 3,000 pastors to come. The first one that's ever talked to us. They tickle pastors. people's ears in churches. Well, we, I have a pastor that doesn't. I know a couple pastors that don't tickle ears. Well, they say a lot of things that a lot of people probably don't like, but they say, well, I'm sorry if you're in the middle of the aisle and you have to get out and you don't feel like you want to get up right now, but I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to let you know what's happening. Yeah. That's, you know? That, that's an exception. Most yeah, pastors yeah. aren't like that. You I know. Me, I've been on the street doing ministry 30 years, carrying a Jewish flag and two pigeons all over the world. Mm -hmm. You know how many churches have allowed me to talk? And they what? know that you're saved by <laughs> well, Jesus? Well, I've handed out millions. Most people, I mean, if they know that. So how many churches have allowed me to talk? One, it was a born-again spirit-filled church. They shut my mic <laughs> off after five minutes. Oh, gosh, no. Oh, no. They're afraid of losing money oh. and people, and they don't understand. Lynette, most, most, most people, I shouldn't say, well, most American so, churches, I call it churchdom, mm -hmm. are threatened by people that know more than they know. Oh, 
It's that simple. Yeah. No, well, this church down south is called Generation Church. It's right across the street. And Pastor down south, Brian where? Visconti. Huh? What's that? Down south, what? Down south in Iowa? Mesa. Mesa. Mesa oh, Mesa, okay. Arizona. Okay. Yeah. Not, yeah. not Iowa. No. Okay, that's, no, that's no. down south. Fair <laughs> ball. You know, that's down south for some people. <laughs> south and a little bit west, yeah. But anyway, yeah, he preaches sure. absolutely. I thought you knew of one up here. Oh, I do know of one up here. Oh, and do. I think it would be um, a pastor um, over at Southbrook Baptist Church. I think he would, uh, he, Springbrook, no, Southbrook. You know, it would be really nice And what Pastor town? Coker and Pastor Mark speak at the same time. Oh. That would be a beautiful, in fact, that's what oh, I want I to talk to about. I think people should love it. I, mean, yeah. I think they, they should would love it because... I'll tell you, what I hear from him is what I tell all the guys in prison and that. It's an uplifting message. It's not this negative one. Everything I hear is biblical and it's all lifting yeah, up. Wonderful. But you don't hear that in most other churches. Yeah. You, can't now, you can't you can't control people without I putting them hundreds of churches. I hear negative Jewish thing everywhere. I was in the church two weeks ago. They called the Jews... Uh, devil worshippers don't what? use them like really? snakes, and these are born again spirit filled churches that will not talk about the Jewish people. So I sit back. I pray and, for the Jews every night. Well, that's. But remember, they're God's chosen people, so they should be delivered. And they always will be. And always will. Thank you for joining Pastor Curtis and Joy for this message. If you would like to hear more from Pastor Curtis or Joy, please check them out on their Coker Ministries YouTube channel. Also, please like and subscribe if these messages are a blessing to you. You can also visit their webpage at cokerministries.com. God bless you. Have a great day. This ministry functions on the support of our listeners. We appreciate your prayers and your financial blessings. Your support helps us to continue to share the message of grace, peace, Christ righteousness, and the finished work of the cross. You can give online or digitally at the Cash app. The name is Coker Ministry or Joy Coker. Also at Venmo at Joy-Coker. Or you can mail your support or prayer request to Coker Ministries, 15239 555th Avenue, Parkers Prairie, Minnesota, 56361. We pray God's blessings over you. You are blessed, highly favored, and so very deeply loved. Again, thank you for joining us in the Word. Be blessed.